Hello fellow YouTubers, in this video I'm gonna show you how to fix this shower pump. Now before we begin I'd like to start this video with a couple of things. So first there's gonna be three parts. So in the part one I'm gonna show you what's the problem with the pump. In the part two I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fix this. And in the part three I'm just gonna go through nice to haves and kind of recommendations um, that I came up with by doing this video. Before we begin as well, I would like to mention to you um, that this pump is connected to mains, um, so you're dealing with mains voltage. So unless you're confident with what you're doing, um, please don't and involve an electrician or a plumber. This video is simply just to show what I did in this particular situation that helped me resolve the issue. However, it's not to be taken as a direct um, kind of step by step guide do your own research as well on top of this and safety first always disconnect all the electrical supply to any equipment that you're working on um, use the appropriate tools use the appropriate precautions and once again if you're not comfortable contact electrician or plumber so this video is more for a competent DIYer who's going to take this video as a guide and going to do further research and use it to hopefully resolve their issue First of all, um, here's the issue. So for last two or three years, it's been doing this. When I basically go for a shower and I switch it on, you would get this buzz and nothing would happen. It wouldn't spin. So from time to time, basically what would happen is I would turn shower on and off a few times and it would just kick in and work normally. And that was happening for the last two or three years. The pump is about 18 years old. It's made by Salamander. Green casing probably gives it out as well for those who know a bit about pumps. And yeah, it would just buzz and it was fine for a while. However, as of yesterday, that's all it does. So as you've seen, I just switch it on and it just buzzes and nothing happens. So um, first thing, I went obviously on the internet to find out what could be the issue and I came across this video which led me to kind of down this path to try to repair it myself. And in this video by Disaster Warehouse, um, it basically shows you what could be the issue with the pump, shows the component, orders the component, there's no follow-up. However, in the description of the video, about three years after the video was made, it says that shower pump still working perfectly three years after this part was replaced. So I said, let's give it a go. Right, so let's chat about the fix. But before that, I'm gonna unplug it and gonna remove the top cover. Now keep in mind, you don't really need to disconnect the pump from the water supply. I did just this to make it easier for you guys to see what's happening. So the issue in this case is the capacitor, just like it was mentioned in the video. And I called around and I finally got this which I got from the guys that I'm gonna talk about later, which I highly recommend. They're based in Ireland, Dublin. If you're not in Ireland, um, I'm sure you can find similar places that will help you out. So, because it's a capacitor, it's very dangerous to touch any exposed metal on it, because if you do short it by touching with your hands, you will get a quite a bit of electricity, um, well, into your body. So what you could do is get some sort of a bulb or something like this, and basically touch it against it. So what that does is the bulb would take whatever charge it was and dissipate it. Now, if you're still unsure, what you could do is get a multimeter, change it to voltage, sorry, just for you to better see it, touch the contacts. As you see, voltage is dropping and that's because whatever was left in the capacitor is now discharged. Now, if it wouldn't be discharged, you discharge it somehow. If you don't have a bulb, what you can do is simply short these two, and that would sometimes produce a spark and the charge would be dissipated. I don't advise that. I advise instead introducing some sort of a load like I showed you there. Now, obviously, do make sure it's disconnected from mains, which it is in my case. Now, before I'm gonna touch it, even though I checked it twice, I'm gonna do it again. And we're gonna remove the capacitor. Now, before you remove, sorry, I nearly forgot, do make sure how yours is connected. So I have another capacitor that looks to be the same, and I have two blue cables, two blue wires on one connector, and I have a gray connector or black, 
seems like it's black maybe on the other one so i'm going to remove it exactly remembering where they went so two blues on one gray on the other one i switched to capacitance which i do have on this multimeter and if i check on this one should be 10 picofarads and there we go it says nine 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 point nine so basically ten so that's good enough do make sure again is discharged before doing this measurement and if i check this one i get 120 nanofarads so basically this is gone so now that we know this is a faulty part which is common apparently in these pumps we connect the replacement so blue here and here just make sure these connectors don't touch at any point because when you connect it to mains you're going to get a nice spark otherwise so now that we have this connected what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to put on the lid back um, to house it nicely and i'm going to power it on basically just to show you what it looks like after the fix okay so we're all set the cover is back on this is the old capacitor that i have removed so what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect the pump back and i'm going to switch it on nothing happens because it's not triggered just yet so i'm going to trigger it now as you can hear the water is flowing everything is a-okay and the pump pump is back being operational so there you go that's the fix now the honorable mentions once again goes to disaster warehouse video here that actually led me to this um, discovery in the first place and domesticpumps.ie which are based in ireland dublin which is where i'm based myself who actually supplied me with the parts helped me to troubleshoot it actually connected this pump with the capacitor connected just to show me that it does fix the issue and gave me a decent deal on the parts on top of that um, i got few extras which i'm gonna talk about now so what i did is i get i got a couple of rubber seals so these two here they are for cold water supply you can also introduce them to hot water supply if you want this was for cold water supply for my pump and this is existing rubber seal that connects obviously to one of the well hoses to make sure it seals properly instead i got four of these rubber seals or washers whatever you want you want to call them that i'm going to replace them with to have a proper seal because again this pump um, has been working for over 18 years so why not replace that so safety first easy enough job thanks a lot to disaster warehouse for making this video that actually led me to do this repair in the first place because otherwise i probably would have got rid of this pump and bought something new for hundreds and hundreds of euros and thanks to domesticpumps.ie um, or just simply domestic pumps here in Ireland in Dublin who actually supplied me with the parts helped me with troubleshooting and just assured me that basically what I'm doing is right so big thumbs up for those two guys and last but not least what I wanted to show you is um, a quick tip on how to make your pump quieter so normally pump sits on some sort of a matting in my case there was no matting at all there were just two plastic clips so what you could do now what this is is simply just a piece of felt so i got a larger piece that is slightly larger than the pump this is just a piece of plasterboard you can just use some sort of a wooden board and i got the same felt from one side cut it in half and put it like this so now if i place my pump like so when it starts it's going to vibrate a bit but the noise is not going to go straight straight into concrete or wooden floor that you guys have and you're going to save yourself a couple euro there by using some contraption like this because well in my case it was free i just got it from scraps in the close by diy shops so yeah guys that's it thanks for watching if you like the video click the like and subscribe for more videos to come do give disaster warehouse thumbs up as well for his video that was published already what six years ago um do give domestic pumps a shout if you're in the similar if you have a similar issue and if you live in ireland thanks for watching have a good day bye bye